Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is merge sorted array. So in this question, we are given two integer arrays, nums1 and nums2, which are sorted in ascending order. And we are also given m and n, two integer variables representing the number of elements inside nums1 and nums2. So our task is to merge nums1 and nums2 into a single sorted array of ascending order. So this is the example given to us. The length of nums1 is going to be m plus n, where m is the number of elements initialized inside nums1 and n is the number of elements initialized inside nums2. As we have to merge both the nums1 and nums2 inside nums1 itself, the last elements are going to be zeros to make place for the elements to be added of nums2. Three spaces have been left which denote the length of nums2. Now let's take a look at this example and see how this question can be solved. I've taken the same example they've given us. So this is nums1 array and this is nums2 array. We have to merge the nums2 array elements inside nums1 and sort it in ascending order. To sort the array in place, we need to use pointers to swap elements. So let's declare few pointers pointing at the respective positions I'm going to mention. So we are going to access the element from right to left so that we get the highest elements because these two arrays given are already sorted and we need to access the greater element first so we access the elements from right to left from end to start so the first pointer will be pointing at the last initialized position inside nums1 i'm going to name it p1 the second pointer is going to point at the last initialized position inside nums2 and the third pointer p3 is going to be placed at the end of the nums array and i'm going to name it p3 so this pointer p3 is used to insert element inside the nums array so this p1 pointer will be iterating from right to left until we reach the starting element and this p2 pointer also we are iterating from right to left as soon as these two pointers go out of bounds it will be pointing at null elements so we do a limit check that these two pointers should be greater than or equal to zero. So whenever these two pointers go out of bounds and point at a null reference, we initialize it with a dummy value so that it can be compared. So this case can be easily handled in code using a if statement. But as of now, let's take a look at the process and working of the code. Now let's check the greater of the two elements pointing at P1 and P2 and we'll insert the greater element at P3. So six is greater than three. So we insert 6 at the P3 and because we access the element at P2, we decrement P2, P1 has not been processed so it will remain the same and P3 will be pointing at the next position to the left where the new element will be added. Now let's again process the elements pointing at these two pointers, 5 is greater than 3. So the element at P2 will be added at P3, 5 will be added at P3 and now decrement P2 and also decrement p3. Now again check the values at these two pointers p1 and p2. 3 is greater than 2. So the element at p1 will be added at p3. So 3 will be added. Since we process the element at p1, decrement p1. Also decrement p3 to add the next element at the new reference. Now compare the elements at p1 and p2. 2 and 2. Both are equal. So in the code we compare if the element at p1 is less than p2, then only we decrement p1 else p2 will be decremented. So we add the element at p2 at p3 and since we added the element at p2 decrement p2 and also decrement p3. Now we have to compare the elements at two pointers right. p2 is pointing at null. So whenever p2 is out of bounds and pointing at minus 1 assign a least possible value so that it can be compared with the element at p1. So the least possible value integer dot min value right that is minus 2 power 31. So P2 will contain minus 2 power 31. Now compare the elements at P1 and P2. 2 is greater than minus 2 power 31. 2 is the element at P1. So add the element at P1 at P3 and decrement P1 and also P3. Now again compare the elements at P1 and P2. P1 is 1. 1 is greater than minus 2 power 31. So add the element P1 at P3 and now decrement P1 and P3. So as soon as P3 goes out of bounds, it means that we process the, all the elements in nums1 and we can end the iteration. And finally, whatever is present inside nums1 is the output. Now let's implement these steps in a Java program. Coming to the function they've given us, the return type is void, which means that you don't have to return anything. You just have to merge the two arrays. This is the nums1 array and m denotes the number of elements declared inside nums1. This is the nums2 array and n denotes the number of elements declared inside nums2. As I've said, let's declare the three pointers. The first pointer will be pointing at the last index position of the declared element inside nums1. I'm going to name it p1. 
So m is the number of elements inside nums1 and minus 1 will give you the index position of that element. The second pointer p2 will be pointing at the last position element inside nums2. And the third pointer p3 which is used to insert elements inside nums1 will be pointing at the end of the nums1. Now we run a while loop until the p3 pointer which is starting from the end reaches the first index position. So once it crosses the first index position we can end the iteration. Now we have to compare the elements at p1 and p2. So let's declare the two elements. Now let's leave two lines for assigning which element should be accessed according to the pointer's position. First let's write code for the main logic. So if element 1 is greater than element 2. Element 1 is the element where p1 is pointing and element 2 is the element where p2 is pointing. So if element at p1 is greater than element of p2 we have to insert element 1 at p3 so nums of so p3 is present inside nums1 element at p3 equal to element 1 and now we have to decrement the p3 pointer so that we add the next element at a new position to the left and we have to decrement the p1 pointer because we process the element 1 and in the else block we will run whenever this condition fails so the failure condition for this is negation of this. So whenever element 1 is less than or equal to element 2, the else block will be executed. So if element 2 is greater than or equal to element 1, we have to insert the element 2 at p3. So p3 is present inside nums1. And we have to assign element 2. And again decrement p3. And also decrement p2. Now this is the main logic. But I also told you two conditions where the p1 and p2 might point at null. So whenever p1 and p2 are greater than or equal to 0, it is pointing at an element inside the array. Then only we access that element, else we assign integer.min value to that element so that it can be compared to the other element. So element 1 equal to p1 pointer 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Then you assign the element pointing at p1 to element 1, right? So nums1 of p1 else we assign integer.min value to element1. So you read it as if p1 greater than or equal to 0 then we assign nums1 of p1 to element1 else we assign integer.min value to element1. So let's do the same for element2 if p2 is greater than or equal to 0 then assign the element pointing at p2 inside nums2 to element1 else assign integer.min value. Now let's try to run the code. The test cases are running. Let's submit the code. There you have it, our solution has been accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is O of m plus n and the space complexity is constant. O of 1 because we are not using any extra space except the pointers. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.